eBay is absolutely awash with relays, and this is good because they're very useful little building modules for electronic and electrical stuff. And I particularly like relays, that's why I've got quite a few here. And if we zoom in, although it says Omron on the top of these relays, well it doesn't on this one, let me just zoom in to show you. Uh, these are not Omron relays. You do not get Omron relays for 99 pence, including shipping from eBay. And uh, this one is actually marked Omer CH, Omerch. They've used the CH instead of the ON because when you go into the distance, it looks a bit like it says Omron when it's not. And these all do seem to be very different uh, from each other. I mean, there's obvious differences like the text. This one's got a different style of resistor, different style of LED. And when you power them up, they all sound a bit different too. For instance, if I do this, mm -hmm. and this sounds flatter, sounds even flatter, and then that one's quite musical in its operation. And they're available in quite a range of voltages. They're available, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, fix this little avalanche of stuff that's happening in the back here. They're available in 12, 24, 48, 110 and 220 volts. And the 220 volt is marked in the coil, 220, 240. So uh, I decided to test one and see what temperature they get up to. And it started off okay. I started off with the 24 volt relay, uh, uh, 12 volts to say, and I put the cover loosely over it. I powered it up. Put, uh, undid the cover but kept it loosely over it so it warmed up internally. Left it for a while and then came back and measured the temperature and the 12 volt one was 54.9 degrees Celsius. Say 55 because that's a nice round figure because that means it was about 40 degrees Celsius above ambient. Then I did the 240 volt one and it got quite a lot hotter. It went up to 115 which meant it went 100 degrees Celsius above ambient which is uh, significantly more, but do you see this sort of hot spot up here? That's the resistor on top, and the resistor sits there, and after about 10 or 15 minutes, that resistor reached about 220 degrees Celsius, and when you, I lifted the lid to look at it, you could actually poke the plastic here. Uh, let me just zoom down in this. You could poke the plastic, and it moved. It was The plastic was softening, the resistor itself is darkening, the plastic's changing colour. Uh, that resistor is just not suited to the job at all. And I can show you why that is. But first thing, let's uh, note some resistance values. Let's uh, set the meter to resistance and measure a typical 12 volt coil. So 12 volt coil has a resistance of about 150 ohms. And if you do the maths on that, uh, 150 ohms, so the current through it would be 12 divided, 12 volts divided by the resistance, uh, 150 ohms gives about 80 milliamps, which it is. And then you multiply that by the 12, uh, and that gives you the wattage, which is roughly one watt. So these coils dissipate about one watt, and they don't get too hot. But the AC one, actually dissipates about 3 watts. I'm not sure why they've done it that way, but when you measure the resistance of the coil, keep in mind this is a, a 240 volt coil. When you measure the resistance of it, whoop, you get roughly 10k, 10,000 ohms. Nice round figure. And when you calculate it out, and there is a, I'm going to show you in a moment that uh, it, this isn't an accurate way to do it because you're, you're dealing with impedance instead of resistance, which is the difference between AC and DC uh, when it's going through a coil. But if we go 240 volts divided by the 10,000 ohms, then we'd expect a current of roughly 24 milliamps times the 240 in a dissipation of about 5.76 watts. But it's not going to be that, and we can actually test that by powering this new relay up through the hoppy meter. So I'm going to plug this in, and instead of the 24-ish milliamps, it's showing 15 milliamps, and instead of this sort of roughly, well, 5.76, it's actually throwing, th sh throwing, ah, sh uh, showing roughly about 3.2 watts. And the reason for that is that when you've got AC flowing through an inductive load like the, the coil in this, um, it actually it resists the flow of the current through it. And that's where the impedance comes in versus resistance. It's not as simple as just measuring the resistance and that's what you get. The current flow through it will be much lower. 
But uh, well, let's keep the calculator because that is quite important here. Now, all these relays have a resistor and an LED in them. It's a very simple arrangement. They've got the, uh, the lead coming up from one terminal to the resistor, going across from the resistor to the LED, and then going down to the other terminal, and that's all. And uh, the resistor they've chosen in this case is 100K. It's very hard to tell because it's changed colour. But if we do the maths now, and keep in mind that it's the cheapest, nastiest, simplest circuit for driving an LED, what will actually happen with red LEDs? You couldn't do this with this uh, blue, green, white LEDs because they don't like being reverse biased. Um, with uh, the red LED, what will happen is when the current's in the correct polarity, the LED will light and it will drop about 2 volts. When the current is flowing the opposite direction, once it exceeds the voltage rating, the reverse uh, blocking voltage of the LED, the LED will uh, not light, but it will conduct in the opposite direction. So this resistor is actually passing current in both halves of the sine wave. So if we zoom out a bit now, and we do the maths, uh, so the resistance is 100K. We'll ignore the voltage of the LED. It's nothing compared to the mains voltage. So I equals V, which is the 240, divided by the 100K equals a current of just about 2.4 milliamps, but it's only lit for half that time, so it's effectively, it's being per the LED is being lit roughly 1.2 milliamps. But look at the dissipation of the resistor at that. Times 240, the dissipation of the resistor is almost 0.6 watt. And this is, uh, I mean... I'd call that a quarter watt resistor. They sometimes nudge the figures they say for these metal film resistors, it's actually rated half watt because it can handle a higher temperature. But that is really pushing that resistor and it has discolored. So if they'd actually instead used, say for instance, a 330K resistor, 240 divided by 330K, that would have given about 0.7 milliamps. It's not a lot, but keep in mind that these don't have to light that bright. MDO Works and Industrial Automation will know that many panels are quite dingy and dark. Um, although, having said that, there are brightly lit factories, I have to admit. But uh, that would have been a dis uh, output about 0.7 milliamps, and it would have been half that, because it's only on half the time. But times 240, the dissipation would be reduced to approximately 174 milliwatts, which is within the rating of, say, a quarter watt resistor. And I'm quite tempted to uh, turn the soldering iron on and actually put a 330k resistor in that right now. So I'm going to do that right now. Job done. I've changed it out for a quarter watt 330k and I've left it running for a while and the temperature went up to 70 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's about, oh, what's that? About 55 above ambient. So, uh, uh, yes, that's about right. So uh, that kind of solves that, but I wonder why they did that. That is an absolute face pan moment. Why would they do it? That that resistor just starts discolouring and melting the plastic so quickly. In a hot panel, that you know, it wouldn't be long before that resistor broke down completely and could potentially flash over and uh, cause problems. Who knows? That's very strange. But I have changed it. And I shall plug this in, noting that it is lying open and that the relay base is not. Let's jam it between some others just to try and hold it in place. And if I plug it in now and I shield it, you'll see it's still visibly lit. Uh, it's not going to be too bright because uh, it looks bright enough to me, but to the camera because it's exposed for the table, it's not so bright. And also that flashing is down to the fact it's pulsioned off at the rate of 50 flashes a second here. So let's get the... the Hop it out of the way at the moment. Let's get this uh, relay base with flex out of the way at the moment because it's kind of bulky and cumbersome. At this point, I'd say I'd be very wary about using the 240 volt uh, relays because they do get very hot. Um, a lot hotter than the 12 volt ones. Uh, other things worth noting the difference between the AC and the DC relay. The DC really, because it's just a single polarity of magnetic field, it just has a single stud that pulls the, uh, let's zoom down this, that pulls the uh, contacts in. And that's this stud here, it's this sort of disc in the end of the coil. But if I uh, fish off the spring here, these are held completely in place by this little spring. If you unhook the spring, it just drops off and then the relay contacts just lift out. This has a 
copper washer. The core is actually split and it's got a copper washer surrounding part of it. The reason for that is that it, effectively the magnetic field induces a current into the copper here and it causes a phase shift. And if you tried running a DC coil from AC, it would just buzz and vibrate. It might not even pull in. But with the uh, this phase shift, it actually keeps a remnant magnetic field between each half wave and it means it can click in and pull in reliably. Maybe that's also why it, they are running at higher current. Um, and maybe I should have seen if I could find a 12 volt AC one and see if it ran at much higher power. The contacts in these look like just standard copper. These are plated in some way. Who knows what they're made of? You just can't tell without actually going to a metallurgy type place and a metallurgy place and actually getting them uh, analysed to see what the metal content is. Again, I wouldn't use these in a sort of professional application. I would use them really just for experimentation. If you want a proper reliable relay, you have to go to somewhere like, like well, a good electrical distributor. In the UK, that would be RS, Farnell. Um, in the America, it might be DigiKey, Mauser, stuff like that, and get a decent, get an actual known brand from them. Other things worth doing, let's open the relay base. The relay base is kind of latched together, not that easy to open, but the spudger can open all. When you pull the base off the relay base, it's got eight pins and the eight pins on the bottom of this are for, well let's uh, zoom back in again to actually see this in closer detail. Helpful that it's black, not really. The eight pins push the contacts in the back of here. I'm going to have to shine a light into this so you can see them. It pushes them into position. And those contacts, this is where uh, different lighting would be quite handy. If I uh, lift, let's see what I can do here. Let's see if I can push these contacts out. They go in in a multiple of layers. If you push this little block up here, it pops out with its contacts. And then if you were to grab this, the next set of contacts pops out as well. They're not really keen to come out, so I can just wheedle these out. So when they're manufacturing these, it goes in as a series of uh, sets of contacts with a little plastic housing. And uh, the screws are just kind of tapped into the plastic, the look of it. I don't think there are, I don't think there's a metal insert in there. Let's uh, take one out and see if there is a metal insert. Oh, there is. There's a nut kind of uh, secured into that. I wonder if it's glued or what secures that in. I suppose ultimately all it's having to do is clamp down onto that. It's not having to take, it's not as if it's dragging the terminal down. It is just a sort of friction fit as a result of that. But that's okay, it purely is just to hold it in position. I shall put that back in before I misplace them, just in case I want to use that really, because I will reassemble the base and the relay. And the same at the other side. So ultimately when they're, they're manufacturing these, they put in the bottom contacts first, then the upper contacts. Um, and oh, of course, then it's got another set at the other side. Oh no, I'm talking crap. There's a surprise. But uh, the other ones, uh, it's usually just two layers, isn't it? I was just uh, mixing the, the sides up there. But uh, yeah, it goes in as the bottom set of contacts, and then it goes up in this upper set of contacts, and then they're all pushed home by this uh, back plate, which also has the spring-loaded uh, assembly on it for latching it onto DIN rail. You basically hook it under the DIN rail at one end, and the, as you press it down, that rat, uh, ramp goes out, and it just clicks on and latches it in place. So yeah, these are cheap, 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 cheap. And unfortunately that kind of shows. As, so as I say, don't use them for professional applications, uh, just personal personal stuff only. If you have one of these 240 volt ones and you're concerned about the fact if it, you look at it and the resistor is getting very hot looking, what you could do, you can open these quite easily just by uh, just slipping a spudger or screwdriver under, not really going too heavily at it. But if you just pop it under these, uh, you can pop that out. And I suppose there'd be no harm in just cutting off the LED circuit. 
because that is just uh, weird that they've done that. When you put it back together, there's a little stud uh, and the little stud goes down and it basically holds that spring on to stop it popping off at the back at the opposite end of the contacts. And then it just clips back together. Yeah, they're cheap. They're interesting. They're fun. And I will admit, I'm, I do like the relays. I, I don't know if, how many of you are into like the old electromechanical control systems, particularly lifts or elevators, and just the walls of relays all clickering and you clicking and clattering away just as the uh, control system activates them. It's quite a, a nice noise. It's very sort of pleasing. But yeah, cheap really is certainly worth buying and playing about with, but uh, definitely not for professional applications.